I am so itchy. My dog is so itchy. This is by far one of the most common presentations that uh, we see over here at why an uh, owner brings a dog to the vets because they're very, very itchy. Today, we're going to discuss the four things which your vet might do when you bring your dog to see the vet because it is scratching. Four things your vet may do if you bring your dog to him or her because it is itchy. Before you do anything else, as all vets will do, they'll take a very, very detailed history. They'll ask you how long has it been, um, all the sort of uh, history of whether they go to a certain park, whether they change anything different, uh, how bad is bad, is it getting better, is it getting worse. So they'll take a fairly detailed history. After they've done all that, they'll examine the animal. Okay, And after that, they'll offer you one of usually four things. Okay, The first one would be, they'll say they can give an injection okay, of steroids to stop the itchiness. And if they see a skin infection, they will uh, usually offer some antibiotics as well, so to clear the infection. So for superficial infections, you know, just to let you know, the antibiotics would last. Uh, it would usually need about three to four weeks, okay, of antibiotics to clear superficial infections. For deep infections, it can take six to eight weeks, okay. So sometimes your vet will just give you a week's worth and ask you to come back the next week. If it's much better, they'll give you more. So that's the first thing you'll do: medication. Bit of steroids to stop the itchiness, bit of antibiotics to clear the infection because regardless if there is infection, regardless of the reason, the inciting cause for the itchiness in the first place, after there is infection, the infection itself will cause, cause the itchiness. So you're better probably want to stop the itchiness for snip in the bud, give a bit of steroids to stop the itchiness, give a bit of antibiotics to clear the infection so the dog is no longer itchy. So that's the first thing. Secondly, they may do a local skin testing. They may say, that, okay, let's uh, test a little bit further um, because whether maybe the antibiotic is not working or it was working and it wasn't again. Okay, so they may go on skin testing, whereby they will usually do three different things. One is that they'll take a swab and swab it, okay, to look for bacteria. Another thing which they may do is that they may do a hair pluck, okay, to put it on a tape strip, okay, um, and to look under a microscope, okay, also the hair plug, they send it off to the lab as well to check for fungus or ringworm or things like that, okay. So that is a bit of a mixture between the hair plug and the tape strip, okay, whereby they use a bit of tape to tape onto the skin, okay, and to make sure there's nothing over there. The last thing which they may do is they may do a skin scrape, okay, so they may just take a little blade, put a bit of liquid paraffin oil on the, uh, on the affected area, and use a blade and just scrape the skin, okay. Not cutting into the skin, but just scraping the skin, getting the superficial cells off and going a little bit deeper than just surface level, okay? What you're looking for for that is mites, okay? So specifically looking for Dermodex mites or scabies mites, okay? And after they scrape it, they put it on a slide, okay? Then they will check it out to see whether there is any sort of um, um, infectious agents over there. So usually this local skin testing contains of four different things. Swab, hair plugs, tape strip, and a skin scrape. Okay, so that's your local skin testing. After that, what they may suggest is the third thing would be uh, allergy blood testing. Okay, so for allergy blood testing, they want uh, they would offer that for a few different reasons. So there's a lot of pros and cons of allergy blood testing. Uh, let me explain that to you. So what does allergy blood testing mean? It means you take a bit of the blood, okay, and you test it against known allergens that can cause problems, okay? And you find out whether your pet is allergic to those allergens. For example, they will test against the different weeds that you may find out there, different grasses, different trees, different shrubs, different, uh, different bushes and things like that, different pollen uh, for all the different plant uh, uh, material, uh, environmental allergens, so to speak. Okay. For indoors, they will test against filial allergic dermatitis, they will test against storage mites, forage mites, um, and uh, house dust mites, and things like that. So they give you an idea to whether your pet is going to be more allergic to this particular allergen or not, and it may help you with a little husbandry to um, improve it so that you can minimize the amount of allergens uh, to this particular animal. 
Another sort of uh, another take to um, allergy testing is um, they may want to do immunovaccination, okay, or rather you've kind of chosen to go down the route of immunovaccination, whereby you actually know what allergens the other friend here is allergic to, and you get those allergens or you actually formulate a very, very special, unique uh, immunotherapy, almost like a vaccination against those allergens for your pet. Okay, So to do that, you have to have the allergy blood testing because you wouldn't know what immunotherapy to do or to formulate if you didn't know what was your pet allergic to. So that's the third thing that your vet may ask you to do, run some blood or allergy testing. Okay. The fourth thing which your vet may ask you to do is do a food trial. Okay, so there's been a lot of different studies out there to say that you know uh, blood testing for food allergies is not exactly accurate, which means that even if you get a high teeter uh, um, in the blood, as example, if our friend here was in, in the blood says that is uh, allergic to beef or chicken, it may not be real in real life, and just because you get a low teeter, uh, say it's not allergic to rice according to the blood. Uh, but in real life, it well could be. So it doesn't correlate that well, which is why the only way to find out, or the so-called gold standard way, to, the, the best way to find out, the most accurate way to find out uh, about food uh, allergens is doing a food trial, which means that you actually go on a food exclusion diet, okay, which means, uh, not food exclusion, a um, specific diet exclusion diet, whereby your vet will advise you to use something very, very uh, bland, like hypoallergenic, and it may be a hydrolyzed diet, whereby it's a brick, the proteins all the way so small until there's no more um, uh, allergens on the molecule itself to cause a problem, okay? Or they may just completely change the uh, protein that our little friend here is on. It could be something um, more exotic like ostrich for a source of protein, or rabbit, or um, venison. Okay, and maybe they may change the source of carbohydrates as well. Instead of rice based or grain based, they may go for a sweet potato um, or something different like that. So there's a fourth thing they ask you to do, a sort of a food uh, food trial. So usually food trials uh, they'll be advising uh, six to eight weeks. Okay, because it does take that long for that uh, protein if it is indeed food. Uh, the food uh, allergy that your dog is allergic to, to leave the body six to eight weeks, which also means that if you start a food trial for two to three weeks and your dog is still scratching, uh, it can be easy to say that the food trial is not working. That's not true. That's because the body is still getting rid of the old protein that was there before the food trial. It takes six to eight weeks to get rid of that. So just be more persistent with the food trials. That is uh, that that is what uh, my, my advice would be. So. These are the four different things, okay? Giving medication, antibiotics, uh, steroids, okay? Um, local skin testing to look for local um, ectoparasites, um, allergens, uh, not allergens, I'm um, sorry, local ectoparasites, uh, bacteria, uh, metastasia. Um, blood testing, looking for environmental allergens, both indoors and outdoors. And finally, food trial. Comment below. If your dog has had any allergy issues before, um, I hope you found this useful. I look forward to seeing the next live event. This is Amity.